Hello and welcome to the Blank Cover Network. I'm BCV Dom and today we are talking about action figures, in particular the latest offering for Marvel Legends. It is the Null and Venom 2-pack and this is part of the 60 years of Spider-Man anniversary line that we've seen released throughout the year. And I can tell you now from having this box in hand, it is a weighty Two pack. It's beefy and it has a price tag to match. So let's take a good look at both of these figures and try and ascertain if they are worth the extra deluxe price tag that they have attached to them. And as we're starting to see this sort of windowless plastic free packaging from Hasbro in their main lines. I'm actually going to show you what this looks like straight out of the box just so that you are aware because when I was looking online I didn't see anyone explaining what it looks like. It's like it's this box and then suddenly it's the figure. So I'm just going to show you very briefly what it looks like when you take it straight out of the box as well. Looking at the packaging quickly on the front you can see a rendering of Null and Venom or perhaps those are the action figures posed up. I can't quite tell. In case Null is a new character to you, because actually this two-pack is inspired by a fairly recent Marvel comic book storyline, Null is the Black King, the god of the symbiotes, and he was created by the award-winning team of Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman. If you haven't read it before, go check out the trade paperback of the King in Black series. It is a Marvel event and a modern one at that, introducing a big new player, Null. With all that being said though, most of the artwork as we can see around the packaging is renderings and photographs. Only on this side here do we actually see some creator artwork, which is a bit of a shame. For me personally, I like the VHS box set artwork that they're releasing for the animated X-Men series and so I really enjoy having comic book-esque artwork on the front of the box. It makes it more displayable for my tastes and I just think that maybe collectors if you're getting rid of that windowless packaging for collectors it might be nice to have artwork on the front and center so that actually it could still be a new way to display your figures or a displayability where you could have the figure in front and some cool artwork behind but that's not what we have here what we have here is pretty standard for what we've been seeing of the 60th anniversary wave so far on the back you can see what they've done they show you what you get with the figure here you get venom and the wings are attached and then it has this little box with a plus symbol that shows you the accessories that you're getting with that figure that's a handy checklist to have on the back on the reverse of the box because obviously you can't see the accessories through a window anymore. Quick collector tip for you that I think is worth looking out for. If you want to check the quality of the action figure, just to make sure no one's messed around with it in the shops or something like that, Hasbro do tend to put sellotape to seal up any openings of the box. So looking at that there, you can still see that the sellotape is sealed on and they normally put one piece of sellotape on the tab and then one on the top or on the bottom or even both. And they'll do that for both sides of the box. So if there's no tape or if it looks like a second tape has been placed down or the tape has been tampered with, then it might be worth going, I would like to return this, buying a different figure from the store, swapping it out, just because I think right now, without the window, that's the only way that you can really check the quality that no one's tampered with the with what's inside before you open it. Okay, that being said, let's open it and see what Venom and Null look like straight out of the packaging. There we go, we've got the two wings, it looks like, right out of the box. You can kind of see it's just a very bog standard cardboard box and everything you can see, Null's leg, poking out there and I'm guessing these are Venom's wings that are front and center on top of the packaging because that makes sense. That's sort of the most efficient way to pack it. Let's just remove these. And yeah, okay, so we've got Null's sword poking out there and you can see in the top left hand corner, there's Null's other head here. And on the other side, you can see Venom's head and this packet here looks like it's Venom's alternate head and both of his hands but you can kind of see that it's very it's a little rough and ready it but it works it does the job it keeps them safe and secure the cardboard angles keep the figures tight so let's get them out of the wraps and have a better look at null and venom oh my gosh here we go null and venom and first impressions 
These are really fun, big Marvel Legends. And so you know, this is exactly how they came out of the packaging. So Venom here has his two claw hands on, and he's got the sort of tongue and teeth bearing head attached to the figure. So the smiling grimace head without the tongue is the one that's with the two fist hands as part of his accessories. Similarly, Null has his teeth bearing head sculpt attached to the figure when I got him out of the box. So the more stoic, focused head sculpt is one that comes in the plastic free wrapping. Taking a look at Venom first, and this is a comic book repaint of the 2018 Marvel Legend Venom movie action figure that came out. And I think we were all clamoring for a taller, bulkier, comic book-esque Venom than we've had so far, and we love that mold. So this answers all of those questions. You still have that great, like, veiny texture all over the action figure, but you have this really gorgeously painted symbiote white symbol that wraps around the entirety of the Venom chest and abdomen. Really great paint job on this Venom. I'm, I'm genuinely impressed by this. Interestingly, they haven't changed the tech on Venom. He still has pins in his elbows and his knees, but again, for me, for my taste, because he is one color palette for the majority, he is black. It doesn't matter because the pins just kind of blend with it. I do like the pinless tech for a lot of the new Marvel Legends figures. I think it really, really works well for a lot of them. But for this, I am happy. I don't think that's a deal breaker in any way if you're thinking, do I want to get Venom if they haven't updated that? No. No, you'll be fine. And articulation overall for Venom is really good. The one bit that I'd just like to highlight is the ab crunch with the sternum swivel. I think that that works really well. You can really get Venom into some cool poses because of, because of that. Looking at the back of Venom, and he has two massive holes, and that's for the wings. Looking at the wings quickly, and you're gonna wanna connect them with these joins here. And it's pretty easy. It doesn't take much effort, there you go, it clips in, but actually if you turn it too far it will pop out. So there is limited uh, posability with the wings, but you, chances are you're going to have them like this, you're going to have them displayed big like that, because otherwise why would you have wings on them? You can't put them on Null unfortunately, they only fit on Venom, unless you're a kit basher and handy with a drill. I am not. The wings on Venom are enormous. This is so cool. I mean, look at that. That is an impressive action figure. And I would say that if this wasn't in a two-pack, this would definitely be a deluxe version of Venom rather than a standard, just because of the size of the wings. I'll come on to pros and cons towards the end of the video, but for now, let's put Venom down and have a better look at Null. Null, the Black King, the god of the symbiotes, and he is a really impressive new figure, and I say that in multiple ways, because he's new in that it's the first time Marvel Legends are giving us this character. It is Null's debut with Marvel Legends. Plus, to my eye, this is an entirely new sculpt, I think. I can't see any reuse. Correct me if I'm wrong, please do leave a comment below if I am, because to me this looks like entirely new everything. So a debut character with a new mold. Very cool. Interestingly, Null does not come with any extra hands. He has just these two hands, one of which his left hand is sort of open in a more menacing clasping motion, and the other is a grip hand, a C-cup hand, and that is to hold the blade. I'm really impressed with how fun this figure is, and I know that's a weird thing to say because he looks like a scary vampire type character, but he is really fun. I would imagine that if we didn't get this two-pack as this sort of Spider-Man anniversary celebration, Null would have ended Ended up a builder figure and I think as a builder figure would that have put him in more hands than this two-pack or not maybe not is my instinct because he's quite a new character die-hard fans of the Venom and Spider-Man comic books would be like oh yeah I want to build Null but casual fans might not know who he is yet so I think this two-pack tying Null with Venom painful though it may be to our wallets is actually a clever way to get a really cool action figure and a great character in the hands of collectors so let's talk pros and cons starting with the pros I have to admit all the head sculpts are fantastic both of Venom's head sculpt and both of Null's head sculpts are 
brilliant. Each head has a different expression for whatever you want in your display. From aggressive and maniacal to plotting and stoic, you have everything you need with each of the head sculpts, I think. And Venom's tongue with his jawline, the massive big white eyes, really cool head sculpt that comes straight out of the packaging. Personally for Null, I prefer the alternate head sculpt. I like it that he looks like a general surveying the battlefield, making plans. There's just something more menacing there, almost akin to a Thanos level character in your displays. So yeah, big pro, four heads, all of them really good. In a similar vein, a pro I'd say are the paint jobs. Now I know people worry about quality control because of the windowless packaging, and I know there have been some mishaps, but I can say with utmost surety that both of my figures have been painted really well, especially Venom. I mentioned it earlier, but that white symbiote symbol has been painted on the black body so expertly. It really is a great paint job and I think that is to kind of hopefully put some of our minds at ease as we transition to this windowless packaging and having to have a bit more faith in the manufacturing process. My Venom and Null have come out really well in terms of paint. A pro for Null is, well, he's Null. <laughs> it is the first time we are getting Null in action figure Marvel legend form. And I love a debut character. I'm a big fan of that, whatever the line. If you get a good, strong debut from a popular character in the modern canon, that is a real plus. So yeah, cool that we actually have Null to add to our collections now. And on the subject of Null, as I said earlier, I think I'm right in thinking this is an entirely new mold. This is a new buck, which is really fun because who knows what else they might use it for for their slightly oversized action figures. And unlike Venom, Null is all pinless tech. And that I didn't even notice when I first looked at it because it all looks so good. And that's kind of impressive, I think, that with Venom, I was like, oh, I can see the pins. With Null, I didn't see the pins, so I didn't even clock it. That's how much of a gift pinless tech, I think, is becoming to the Marvel Legends line. Another pro is they both have really good articulation for large figures, for oversized action figures. We all know that that can be a bit of a tricky thing when it comes to large figures. Posability and having them balance without a stand can be tricky, but these two as standard, and I say as standard, i.e. Venom without wings, have really good articulation and fun posability. So that is really cool to have that with oversized action figures. Final pro, and I think this one's down to taste, so please do let me know if you get this two pack what you think, but I think these scale really well with Marvel Legends. They both tower enough above the six inch action figures and even compared to some of the builder figures the chunkier guys like Ursa Major or Zemnu they look menacing they look big and tough but maybe in your collection especially if you're mixing up with some selects maybe some Marvel selects you might not think that so do let me know in the comments what your collection is and if they scale because I'd be really curious to know going forward if both these figures scale well in your collections. Moving on to the cons now and to start with I think Venom's wings are awesome. I think they are really well put together and well painted and their sculpt is cool. They've got little gaps in the skin between the bones. Really cool however when you put them on Venom I find it very difficult to get him to stand. It just makes him top back heavy. And so far I've had to put him in a lower squatting position to get him to stand. And even then it's a tricky job. So without the wings, Venom stands really easily. With the wings, oof, it's tough, but I'd rather have the wings than not. So even though it's in the cons list, it's more just a word of warning than a reason not to buy him. Another con is the lack of accessories for Null. Venom gets two sets of hands, and I think Null really could have done with that as well. That's just for my taste. I'm sure we'll all be posing him with the blade in hand. That just makes sense. But if you wanted to do something different, a bit more dynamic, you'd want another set of hands. And because this is his debut time in the Marvel Legends line, you're not going to have any interchangeable hands that you can kind of fudge around with or kit bash with. It'll just be too tricky, I think. So yeah, he could have done with another set of hands. And a big con, I still think, is unfortunately the price point.
I managed to get this two pack for £75 over here in the UK, which I think compared to other sites is a really good deal, a really reasonable price compared to other retailers. However, getting them in hand, do I think that both of these are worth more than double the price? Like that's what you're comparing it to really, I think. You're saying they are two deluxe action figures together and we're charging upward of 80, 90 bucks. I think that's a bit too steep personally. If these two action figures came in at 60 or 65 bucks, no question worth the price of admission, really fair deal, wouldn't even be worth bringing up because they're such good figures. But even though they are good figures with the current price point, I think it's just that little bit too high. As compared to say some other standard Marvel Legends where people are complaining, oh it's way too high, I think this is just that bit too high. It's a hair too high and if you knock 10 or 15 bucks off of it, I think collectors would think that would be much more reasonable. But hey, if you've got the cash and you don't mind it and you want to buy Buy these figures they are really good figures so if you can afford it don't let the price point stop you they're great so there you go null and venom the two pack how are you finding this 60th anniversary of spider-man line are you picking these two up are you picking and choosing which members of the line you're buying or are you going for the whole thing i'd really love to know so leave me a comment below if there's ones that you've got your eye on or ones where you're like nope not a chance staying away from that until it goes on sale let me know in the comments below and please do like share and subscribe with this video as a new channel that makes a big difference Difference to us. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll be back with another one very soon.